A group of 18 British servicemen from the Special Air Service were killed in a strike on Odessa. This was reported in an interview with the Telegram channel, Pool N3, which is linked to journalists from the Kremlin Pool, by retired Spanish Army Colonel Pedro Banas. I have just received information that I cannot confirm, I asked for confirmation and they said it was accurate. These are sources that I have known for many, many years, 30 years, they are usually very reliable. So, the Russians carried out an attack on Odessa, which killed 18 members of the British Special Air Service, the retired military officer said. Banyas noted that another 25 British Special Forces were wounded. And they tell me that French soldiers have died. These are not mercenaries, who are French, no, these are soldiers of the French army, he added. Previously, leaked US intelligence documents revealed that 50 British Special Forces were carrying out missions deep inside Ukraine. There are also reports of casualties among the French, and these are not mercenaries, but soldiers of the French regular army. The exact number has not yet been named, but such one-off losses have not been seen since the war in Algeria. Earlier it was reported that a powerful explosion thundered in Odessa during an Russian air raid. According to the Telegram channel, Military Observer, the target of the missile strike in Odessa was the warehouses of Nova Pashta, where weapons and ammunition of Ukrainian formations were stored. The Russian armed forces periodically strike military targets in Odessa and the region. The last time explosions in the city were reported was on July 15, but no details were given. And on July 10, the Russian armed forces struck the port of Odessa with the coastal missile system, Utes. According to the underground, in particular, a warehouse with ammunition for the Ukrainian armed forces, where the missiles had been brought the other day, was destroyed. Vulnerable Putin expects Trump to give him occupied territories in Ukraine. Europe is waking up to the clear realization that the White House under Donald Trump is no longer an unimaginable nightmare. The most likely reality that will arrive in November is that Russia will gain the upper hand in its brutal war against Ukraine. As Hamish de Breton Gordon, a former commander of NATO's Rapid Reaction Battalion, writes in a column for the Telegram, given the failure of the Ukrainian counter-offensive last year, the decline of Western support and Moscow's successful transfer of the economy to the war footing, it is easy to believe that Russia holds all the cards. But it does not. President Vladimir Putin has been forced to beef up defenses around his palace north of Moscow to protect himself from deep-lying Ukrainian drone strikes. Satellite images show at least seven medium-range air defense systems have been deployed near the perimeter of the dense forest on the shores of Lake Valdai. Does this look like the country is about to score a decisive victory? Since Kyiv's drones and missiles have been able to hit targets deep inside Russian territory, they have been destroying air bases, oil storage facilities, command centers and, most notably, the Black Sea Fleet. All this has forced Moscow's military command to prioritize limited air defense capabilities to cover what it believes are important targets, the military expert writes. The luxury mansions of the Russian elite are considered highly valuable if Putin ordered so much air defense to be deployed there. Ukrainian security sources claimed back in January that they had flown a drone directly over Putin's palace to attack an oil terminal near St. Petersburg. A key element in Ukraine's success with drones has been Western governments relaxing restrictions. Allies have been helping develop the drones and recently told Kyiv they are willing to let it use the technology to strike specific targets in Russia. Moscow clearly believes that Kyiv remains a threat forcing it to stretch its defenses far from the front lines. The Kremlin's recent offensive on Kharkov failed for the same reason. Putin's army was forced to halt by devastating drone and missile strikes. So imagine if we in the West were bolder, gave Kyiv a free hand and allowed our long-range missiles, not just drones, to hit weapons depots and critical targets much deeper into Russian territory.
Perhaps that would have the added benefit of awakening Russian citizens to the reality of what it means to wage a war that has cost their country more than 350,000 casualties, the expert notes. In the last two months alone, Russian troops have lost 70,000 men at a rate of more than 1,000 a day. Those numbers are likely to increase this summer, especially if Putin uses his army's air defenses to protect his own property. In fact, Russia is much more vulnerable than it appears at first glance. Kiev has successfully adapted its strategy given its limited resources. What we do in the next four months can shape Europe's security for generations and the Western leaders who met in the UK yesterday must remove the handcuffs from Ukraine so it can gain a decisive advantage. Because this war is not over, the expert concluded.